Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I am Dr. Madhya Saeed, board certified integrative holistic family physician. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Rabbi shakli sadri wa yasirli amri wa ahla lukta tammin lisani yafqahu qawli. We are living in a world like no other. We walk the world wanting to control everything, wanting to control the future, wanting to just be stuck in our past, worried about our future. We walk the world oblivious, stuck on a hamster wheel, not realizing that the decisions that we are making are affecting more than just ourselves. So oblivious to the fact that every bite we take can either help us or hurt us, can either help us or hurt the planet. Oblivious to the fact that every word thought we speak can either have a negative or positive consequence. Oblivious to the fact that we are living in a world filled with negativity, unappreciative to the people or the blessings that we have been giving as we are no longer people of Alhamdulillah. We must wake from this and take charge of our health and our free time because Prophet Muhammad says that there's two blessings most people will lose in their health and their free time. But in a world where we just can't control the future and we cannot control the past, that is all in Allah's hands. We must control what we can change. And even Allah says in Quran Surah 13, ayah number 11, He says, I will not change the condition of the people until it is they themselves that change, that they change what is within themselves. So what are we going to start with? We have to start with changing what is in, with our, in ourselves. So let's go ahead and start. I really wanted to discuss this you know, inshallah, with you guys on how to optimize the health and healing of our bodies and our futures. SubhanAllah. We are going to take care of the blessings that Allah has given us. Take care of ourselves and our families. We are going to go fear to empowered because we are living in a world like no other. We are living in constant fear. We wake up with fear. We go to sleep with fear. We're always worried, stressed. But subhanAllah, what is COVID-19 has uncovered? COVID-19 has uncovered that we, you know, subhanAllah, need to have time to reflect on what is going on in this world. Because we are going from hopelessness and fear. We need to go to a time where we are empowered and full of hope. And the way that we're going to do that, the way that we're going to do that is by reflecting. So what has COVID-19 uncovered? It is uncovered that we were already a people of that lacked, alhamdulillah, that we were already living our lives in full negativity. And that is leading to un impulsive decisions because when you are a negative, your amygdala takes over and that is your fight and flight impulsive types of reasoning, subhanAllah. It is uncovered that we are sicker as a society, as now science has proven and the statistics have proven, the statistics that are coming from China have proven that the people with chronic conditions, obesity, overweight, are actually doing worse, subhanAllah. The people with heart disease have a 10 times more likely chance to die, and those people that have diabetes have a seven times more likely chance to die, and those people who have obesity have three times more likely chance to die. But then what about all the young kids? What about everybody who's younger that is sick? Because they are actually, this is what's uncovering, is that we are living in a world where we don't even know if we're really sick or not. Because one out of every second have pre-diabetes, and 90% don't even know it. 90% don't even know it. So what is leading to those poor, poor outcomes? And even before COVID-19, we had a crisis. Prophet Muhammad says that we are a people that will lose two blessings, our health and our free time. And it's like Allah is giving us back our free time to take care of our health, subhanAllah. Because remember, infection plus susceptibility leads to symptoms. So yes, we can't really take charge of if we're going to be infected or not, but we can at least optimize our health and well-being to lower our susceptibility. Because I was there, I suffered from all of these chronic conditions where I was like, there has to be something that I can do. And when I got shingles, a virus that, you know, subhanAllah, attacks older individuals, when I was getting that as, you know, as a 27-year-old, I'm like, what is going on here? What is happening to my body? And just like with that, because I really wanted to know why and what I could do to stop this, I was, there was a hope. 
And then I was like, there has to be something that I can do. There has to be something that I can do to stop this in its tracks, to lessen my susceptibility. So therefore, if I do get hit by an infection, what can I do that my body will be able to tolerate what it's being thrown at? And therefore I can have less symptoms and it won't affect my family as much. Because remember, we are literally left in a world with no hope. We live in a life where if you're not married yet, they're like, why aren't you married yet? You know, if you don't have children, why don't you have children yet? If I have four boys, I get, guess what? Why don't you have a girl yet? Or you only cook one dish, negativity on top of negativity. Negativity is running our lives. Negativity is just running our economy. But subhanAllah, what we don't realize is this negativity is destroying our families. This negativity is destroying our health. And we are we truly a people of Alhamdulillah when we are always a negative? And we're not alone. We are getting sicker. Six out of every 10 adults has a chronic health condition. And they say three-fourths of the population will actually die due to a lifestyle condition. Like that's related to their lifestyle. And a bad diet will kill 11 million, and that's a reasonable, like an under, underestimate. 11 million a year will die of a bad diet. Now these lifestyles, we talked about heart disease, diabetes, obesity, these are things that we do have a lot of control on. And we are not alone, and this is just, we're getting sicker and sicker as a humanity. Our children are getting sicker. They say by, by you know, 2025, 80% of the children will have a chronic health condition. And then this numbers are continuing to escalate specifically also with autism, where if we continue at the current trajectory, one out of every four children will have autism by 2033. And our world is suffering. It's not just us that we are suffering due to our decisions and every, all the choices that we are making, but our world is also suffering. As with the United Nations says we only have 60 harvests left. 60 harvests less, which is literally a lot of the plant and animal species are becoming extinct. Our, Sea life is dying. We have 400 marine dead zones across the world. And we're, Allah even Surah Baqarah, Allah has said where these people, they're like, oh, you're corrupting the world. They're like, no, no, we're not corrupting it. We're just fixing it. We're just reformers. But Allah says, no, unquestionably, you are corrupting it and we do not perceive it. What will happen to humanity? What will happen? And when the world is giving us no hope, we must have hope. Allah has never told us that we should never have hope. We should have hope. There's so much hope. SubhanAllah, Allah has given us hope that Allah says that he will not change the condition of a people until they change whatever is in themselves. SubhanAllah, so we must have hope. So let's start with taking care of our bodies because SubhanAllah, even when the children of Israel were being suffered and cross, you know, like killing their children or dying, SubhanAllah, even then Allah gave them hope. Allah could flip the ocean for them. Why can't, what do, we, what do we think that we can't do this for ourselves? Allah can't do that for us. SubhanAllah, Allah can do this for us. We just have to be grateful. In, this, in Surah Ibrahim, ayah number seven, Allah uses the strongest language in the Quran. He says, I swear to it, I swear to it, I swear to it. I promise I'm going to increase you. And how is he going to increase us? And he doesn't even tell us what he's going to increase us. He's just going to increase us. SubhanAllah. We just we have to be grateful. And remember, the past and the future is not in our control. It is in Allah's control. And over and over and over, every single solitary day, we say, Ya Allah, please guide us on the right path. Ya Allah, please guide us on the right path. Ya Allah, please guide us on the right path. Because we do not know. We do not know what our path is. Because what path is for one person may not be the same path for another. SubhanAllah. So we have to take what the decisions that we can do today, that is in our hands. So we have so much hope, inshallah. Let's start with those. SubhanAllah. So remember, the decisions that you make on a daily basis, those decisions are in your hands, SubhanAllah. And even just the things that I have talked about right now, all of those pieces, inshallah, can really help you heal, not even just these little itty bitty viruses, and not the big virus, viruses, but not even just these viruses or these bacteria, but it can help us heal from chronic conditions. SubhanAllah. I've had people with severe petriasis rubia pilaris, and people with, you know, where their body is aching head to toe, their rheumatoid arthritis, and autism, and ADHD, and digestive issues, and pandas, and 
you know, allergies and pain and all of these symptoms, alhamdulillah, all gone just by applying what I'm going to teach you today. Subhanallah, by putting your body back into balance, subhanallah. And how can we put your body back into balance? Can you imagine what we'd be able to accomplish as a Muslim ummah? What would we be able to accomplish? SubhanAllah, when we are actually a people of Alhamdulillah, we have to get back to the first word Allah has told, given us. Iqra, read, understand, use your brain. To use this time to re reconnect and be in the moment. Because remember, the Quran is guidance. The Quran is healing for us, SubhanAllah. And all of these conditions have one underlining root cause. SubhanAllah, we have to optimize our immunity. But it all starts, all the secret is in our hands. And that is from the Quran and Sunnah. Because it, when we are sick, it is Allah that cures. There's nobody else. And remember, subhanAllah, what is the immune system? Immune system has a lot of different pieces. It is basically the defense. It is the, you know, the army that attacks, uh, attack, keeps all the bad guys out, subhanAllah. And then we have inflammation. Inflammation is one of the ways that it is able to do it. It's basically the, the response that occurs by the immune system when it's faced with harmful stimuli like viruses, bacteria, toxins, and injuries. And it's really important to keep our immune system as healthy as possible. So therefore, it can take care of whatever it's being thrown at. And then so it doesn't turn into chronic inflammation that can cause disease, inshallah. So how can we achieve better health? We have to get back to ground and, so not, and live a fayyab lifestyle. We have to live fayyab. We have to eat fayyab. We have to um, be less stressed and give our body the rest that it needs to be more, you know, less, more spiritual and less negative, subhanAllah, to fill our lives with purity. And Allah, has, so when specifically with food, Allah has said in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, number 168, Allah says, O oh mankind, eat of whatever is on the earth that is halal and tayyib and do not follow footsteps of shaitan. Indeed, he is your clear enemy. SubhanAllah. And what is tayyib? Tayyib is pure, peaceful, tranquil, safe, and nutritious. Allah has shown a tree that a tayyib is like a tree with roots firmly fixed and its branches are high, giving fruit, while a, a khabit tree, a impure, artificial GMO preservatives, all of that can actually, that's like, can lack resilience, our roots are uprooted. So who are we people? Are we a people of the Bayyab? Are we a Habith? Before this, Allah talks about a group of people. And before Surah Baqarah, number 168, Allah talks about a group of people who are standing next to the hellfire with hasarat, multiple regrets of following the social norm blindly. SubhanAllah. And then right after that, Allah said, go, go do this more, go do that more. But what did Allah choose to say? Allah said, eat a wish that is halal and Bayyab and do not follow footsteps of shaitan. Subhanallah. He only orders to you evil and immorality to say about Allah that what you do not know. And if you tell them what Allah has revealed, they said, we're going to keep on doing what our forefathers have done, even though we know more now than they did. These people are kafaru, summan bukman, umyun. They will not understand. Like cattle, like herd mentality. What does, what, does, what does cattle do all day long? Eat without thinking and just herd it wherever the, 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 the person is telling it to go, subhanAllah. And then again, oh, Allah's not talking about food. <laughs> Yes, he is. SubhanAllah, he says, oh, you have believed, eat of the pure things that Allah has provided and be grateful to Allah if it is indeed Allah that you worship. Now that is super heavy. If it is indeed Allah that you worship, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah, because what is our purpose of being Muslims? Our purpose is being the Muslim, SubhanAllah, is, oh, you have believed, uh, Allah has created the humans and the jinns, except that they should worship me, SubhanAllah. And our purpose is to worship Allah. And then again, subhanAllah, Allah has said that he's commanded his believers, like he's commanded his messengers, ease of the, me the good things, the pure things, and then continue to work in righteousness. And then again, eat of the pure things that Allah has provided. And do not pass those limits. Otherwise, my love, my anger should be on top of you. And then you know, Allah says that if those people that my anger should be on top will surely fall hawad, like somebody falling from a high birth all the way straight down, subhanAllah. And then but indeed, I am a perpetual forgiver, subhanAllah, but we got to make that you turn and go straight back to him, inshallah. And then we have is, oh, you have believed, subhanAllah. Like we just got to do this, subhanAllah. But here in this ayah, in Surah Al-Araf 157, Allah says that he's, he says, a given equation to success that if you follow the sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then live tayyib yuharrimu alayhim wa then and only then our shackles will be removed. When our shackles are removed, it will lead to 
you know, success for now, success in this life, success in the eternal after, subhanAllah. And remember, Fayyab is just a prerequisite for doing good that on this day, on Surah on this day, all the Fayyab food has been made halal for you. And then the later, latter part of the ayah, Allah has said that whoever denies the faith, his worth will become worthless, and he of the hereafter will be amongst the losers. SubhanAllah. This is so heavy, brothers and sisters. We have to bring us, ourselves back to this, subhanAllah. Even in Sahih Muhammad Muslim Hadith, Prophet Muhammad says that Allah is pure and only accepts what is pure. And then he says, okay, so then what is that pure, right? What is that? <laughs> it's the then Prophet Muhammad says, so immediately goes into two ayahs from the Quran that say, each pure continue to work in righteousness. Each pure be grateful and truly worship Allah, subhanAllah. And this is just, there's so much more, and this is just the beginning to our understanding. SubhanAllah, look at these ayahs over and over and over again. Allah has told us this, SubhanAllah. Over and over, Allah says that eat of the pure things if you truly believe in Allah. Eat of the pure things if you are truly a believer. Eat of the pure things if it is indeed Allah that you worship. Otherwise, my wrath, if it's success, 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 SubhanAllah. And linking this, like, subhanAllah, we're living and eating pure, is now linked to success, falah, in this life and the hereafter, and linking it to true faith. We have to, oh, and then if you start to live khabith and eat khabith, subhanAllah, that opens doors to shaitan. And we have to now understand that this living fayyib can actually help us or hurt us. And actually, is one of the main key pieces of optimizing our immune system and recovering from chronic disease. Subhanallah. Because right now, with the people that have chronic illnesses, those are for most people likely to have conditions. But some people may even have underlying chronic conditions. But we know that inflammation now, science has proven that inflammation can actually lead to uh, less resilience. Subhanallah. So what we have to do now is we need to make sure that we put our bodies back into balance. And we put our bodies back into balance, we can heal not one of these symptoms, but then all of them simultaneously once we figure out your root cause. And subhanAllah, and give your body the control and the resilience that it needs to get through anything. Because remember, we do have control. And this entire world's called epigenetics, where everything that good happens to you is from Allah, and whatever bad happens to you is from our own actions. SubhanAllah. And where we are disturbing Allah's balance, and that is leading to disease, that is leading to a weakened immune system, that is leading to a decreased resilience. So, brothers and sisters, we need to have hope. And we can just start with these pieces, inshallah. SubhanAllah, just starting here, you're doing the things that we can control. And that is, an, in, if we're focusing on a pure lifestyle, we're focusing on optimizing your stress management, your social health, your spiritual health, you're increasing your gratitude, the food that you're putting in your body to make sure it's fayyab, to make sure you're eating one third, one third, one third, to make sure that you're hydrating your body effectively, subhanAllah, and giving your body the nutrients that it needs, subhanAllah, eat lots of fruits and vegetables, staying away from toxins, stress management, properly have mindful meditation, mindful prayers, mindful lifestyles could all help to optimize your immune system and then also sleep make sure you're giving the body your rest that you need to sleep and then um subhanallah and then make sure the people around you are going to lift you up not drag you down and making sure that you are grateful gratitude is key in this process subhanallah because remember all of these pieces can have you make better decisions, connect your amygdala, which is the responsible for good decision-making in the, uh, I'm sorry, the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala, both of them are responsible for good decision-making. And once you put your body in a play of lifestyle, you can actually make better decisions because both of these are connected. You can actually lower inflammation that therefore you're the less prone to autoimmune conditions or chronic conditions. And then you can, optimize your immune system so then you are less resilient to the whatever comes our way. Because brothers and sisters, they, this might not be the last thing that we have to deal with. So we have to use this Allah-blessed time, use this Allah-blessed time to be more resilient, to create 
more better foundations of good health to take care of our bodies, to take care of our families. So therefore, when we go back out into the world, we are more stronger, we are more loving, we are more caring, we are thinking about every decision that we make, the effect on our families, the effect on our planet, subhanAllah. This is Allah blessed time, use this time. Use this time to heal yourself, heal your families, so you are stronger and more loving than ever before, inshallah. Next time, inshallah, we're gonna talk about what these pieces are in a little bit more detail. But again, I am Dr. Madia Saeed, board certified integrative holistic MD, medical doctor, and subhanAllah, I've lived this lifestyle. If I can do it and my family can do it, you can do it. And this is a love less time to do it. So let's do it. And remember, education is power. Education was the thing that's gonna help us free us from the fear and help us go from fear to empower, help us go from hope to hopelessness, or from hopelessness to hope, inshallah. So this is alhamdulillah, a love less time. Let's do this with our families. We're gonna, I'm gonna post another video, inshallah. We're gonna do this. If you have any questions, follow holisticmommd.com. Ask me questions on my Facebook page, Holistic Mom MD. And Instagram, subhanAllah, I have an amazing course, have seminars and all those things coming up. Alhamdulillah, an amazing infographic that you can pass around to your families to increase the resilience. So we can use this Allah blessed time to change what is within ourselves so then Allah can change the condition of the people. Assalamu alaikum.